Suppose we flipped a coin and rolled a die, and we wanted to know the probability of getting a head on the coin and a six on the die. Now, notice that we could list out all the possible outcomes here. Uh, we could get a head, and then a one, a head, a two, a head, a three, a head, a four, a head, a five, a head, a six, right, on the coin and then on the die. Or we could get tails and one, tails and two, tails and three, tails and four, tails and five, tails and six. And so there are a total of 12 possible outcomes here. How many of them would have a head on the coin and a six on the die? Well, only one of them, right? One out of those 12, and so there's a one twelfth probability of rolling, um, a six on the die and getting a head on the coin. Now, you might also notice that the probability of getting a head on the coin is 1 out of 2. The probability of getting a 6 on the die is 1 out of 6. And if we were to multiply those, we would get the 1 twelfth. And it turns out to be true that the probability of both events happening is the probability of A times the probability of B if A and B are what's called independent. Now, independence means that the result of the head, uh, of the coin flip does not depend or affect the result of the roll of the die. Let's look at some examples. Uh, suppose we toss a fair coin twice. Uh, the first event is the, uh, first toss and the second, uh, event is whether or not the second toss is a heads. Are these independent events? Yes, these are independent independent. Why? Because the result of the second coin toss does not depend upon the first one. It, the second toss has no idea whether the first toss was a, was a head or not. Uh, how about the two events? Uh, it will rain tomorrow in Houston, and it will rain tomorrow in Galveston, which is a city near Houston. These are not independent because the cities are close together. They're likely to have similar um, similar weather patterns, and so these are not independent events. How about you draw a card from the deck and then draw a second card without replacing the first? This is again not independent because the result of the first draw uh, will affect the result of the second draw. For example, if we're asking about, let's say, the probability of getting an ace, the, the likelihood of getting an ace on the second draw depends upon whether or not we got an ace on the first draw. So these are not independent. But if two things are, are independent, then we can, uh, go ahead and use that multiplication idea. So for example, in your drawer you have six, ten pairs of socks, six of which are white, uh, and seven t-shirts, three of which are white. If you randomly reach in and pull out a pair of socks and a t-shirt, what's the probability both are white? Well, the probability of white socks is, uh, let's say there's six white out of ten pairs, right? The probability of a white T, uh, is, let's see here, three of them are white out of ten. So the probability that both of them will be white will simply be the likelihood of the first being white times the second, the likelihood of the second one being white because the probabilities, oops, that's not right. It's not out of 10. It's out of 7, right? 3 out of 7. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Um, so the probability of both of them being white is this. And we can simply multiply them because the probability of pulling out of the t-shirt being white is not dependent upon the probability of the socks being white. So we can go ahead and multiply that. That's 18 out of 70. In other words, there are 70 possible outcomes and 18 of them involve both of them being white. And of course, we can reduce that fraction down to 9 35ths. So that's the probability that both of them are white. Later on, we'll look at how to deal with the non-independent case.